Hi, welcome back to Ethical Hacking. Today we're going to look at InMap and Hydra, so scanning and brute forcing an account. The idea about this is if you haven't had access to these tools, it's okay. We're going to cover how to use the tools during the lab itself. That way at least you'll get the what for what tools we're using. And you can add the whys and maybe more of the hows later on or on your own dime. So, resources, we're going to use a victim, which is a Windows 2003 server. Now, the reason I use Windows 2003 is it offers an excellent platform, great services, very easy to use. Um, you can access the network interfaces in two clicks of the mouse. It's, uh, but largely, I use it because you can run it on 128 megabytes of RAM, and it runs great. So, even on 128 meg of RAM, this server runs lightning fast. And we'll be using Linux as the attacker. Now, any Debian-based distro, is you can use that. You can really use uh, another, maybe a Red Hat-based distro or something like Slacks, or if you want to go Gentoo, that'd be okay too. However, we will be leaning towards the traditional Linux environment, which uh, the Debian seems to hold very close to that, the Kali, Canopics. Uh, in this case, I'm using Linux Mint, but even Ubuntu. The newer distros, uh, where Red Hat has chosen to modify the way interfaces look and the commands you use and the way the system operates, it's, uh, it's really not conducive to the uh, taking the learning that we've had for the last 40 years and moving it into the new environment. So I'm not happy with what they did there. But the Debian-based seems to be still very consistent with uh, what came out with Unix 40 years ago. Okay, tools. On the victim, we're going to be using built-in services. Everything's built in on the Windows 2003 system. We're just going to have to activate a few things. I do apologize a little bit with my voice. I've uh, I lost my voice, so I'm, I'm working on that right now, trying to get my voice back. The attacker tools we're going to use, Nmap, Hydra, and the Telnet client. So part one, I want to help you set up your victim. And today's lab really is part one, setting up the victim. So before we go into a lab and we, we start running all these commands, we need to have a victim that's vulnerable. You can, of course, use a, vulnerable, uh, a victim that is not vulnerable or something that's fully patched and hardened. But when you're just learning hacking, going against something like the new Mac OS X or breaking out the new update to an iPhone, if you think you can hack it, you, maybe you should do that for uh, the hundreds of thousands of dollars that Apple or Microsoft will give you for hacking their devices. We're going to use a very vulnerable system, and that will let you learn the techniques and how the hack works throughout the entire process. So let's set it up. First thing we're going to do, set up general access vulnerabilities. We're going to enable the guest account inside of Windows. So net user active yes guest, I'm just going to copy that command and paste it right in. Over here in Windows, log in, run, do the CMD right there. I'm going to do this. And paste that command in, net user slash active yes guest, bam, done. Now I'm going to enable remote desktop. We'll see if this is the right command for it. Your mileage may vary. I could have made mistakes in this. And we want to enable Telnet, and we want to go through and give it a, let's see, we'll make the start automatic. Paste. No, I didn't copy that, did I? There we go. Got Telnet there. Let's go ahead and make uh, 9,099 connections. Let's make it fail a hundred times before it kicks us out. Now the reason I'm setting this is so we can have lots of people attacking the system at one time, and then the 100 fails lets us fail with the login a hundred times before it before it causes a problem for us, before it kicks us out. And we'll start the Telnet server. If it's already, oops, I didn't copy that. If it's already running, we can stop it and uh, then start it. Right, we'll just go and do that. We'll say 
SC stop like this. SC start tell net SVR. And we'll see if this works. Start pending, stop pending. Okay, hopefully that worked. And we'll look at the config. All right. Got our sessions there. Max fail. Yeah, that looks great. That's a very vulnerable telnet configuration. Now let's add some users. Now I'm going to run this command and we'll talk about this command. This command net user add active yes. That's pretty self explanatory. And then we have Fatma Amitav. Now the Fatima right there and the Amitav right there. That's the username and that's the password. So for the password, because I'm going to be doing a brute scan with Hydra here that's just going to be using the reverse of the username, right there I've just reversed the username and I'm using that as the password. Slash full name, we're saying this is Fatma Abdullah, and then a comment, marketing purchasing agent, Abu Dhabi branch. So I'll press enter. Great. Now I'm going to add her to the Telnet Clients group. So net local group slash add Telnet Clients Fatma. Excellent. Now if we go look at this account, we'll see that she's now in there. Well, we should see that she's in there. There we go. We can see her details. And if we go to groups, tell that clients, we can see Fatma's right there. And yes, you can get to it just by clicking on her and going member off. There you go. So now she exists. Over here, we're going to create some file shares for enumeration and access. This, this way, we can actually set up some, uh, some file enumerations when we do shares. We're not going to use it in the next lab. But it's good to have. You know, it's good to make your box as vulnerable as you can. So the first command there just made the directory shared. Now I'm going to try to run iCackles on this. And the iCackles will say take this directory, this uh, shared directory, and grant everyone object inheritance, container inheritance, full access, and then replace the uh, permissions on there. Now I'm going to set up a share. I'm going to be shared. And we'll see that net share shared equals, and then the SQL and backslash shared, grant everyone full access. And we've done that. Now I'm going to do the same thing right here. So we'll run these commands. Let's take that off, copy that, and I'll just paste this. So, and I made a mistake. Got that, or exists. Oh, look at that. Why do I have that? Marketing, marketing, net share, marketing, marketing, remark. Grant, bottom of full. In this case, it's giving me an error on this one. So I'm getting uh, the net share marketing equals slash remark. I've got that, and the slash grant the Fatma comma full is going to have to be, uh, it's going to have to change just a little bit there. So let's look at that. And yeah, it looks pretty right. Marketing remark. I wonder if those quotes are right. The quotes may not have copied over right. So let's go change those and just be sure. Whenever you're copy and pasting this, if uh, if you copied out of something where they had smart quotes, there we go. Yep, it's the quotes. So watch out for the, the double quotes there. Sometimes you'll get the smart quotes in there, and the smart quotes are the ones that are angled just a little bit. Back over. 
Now we're going to create a file here, so I'm going to do copy con credit cards txt. I'm going to do this inside of Fatmos directory. So I'm going to go cd over to documents and settings because in Windows 2003 documents and settings is where your users were. I'm going to pop into Fatma. So in this directory, we can see, oh, we already have it there. Well, I'll do a copy con and I'm, well, we're doing copy paste, so I'll go ahead and paste this. See the copy con credit cards.txt. In this case, it's got a space in it. Now this dro drops down one line. I'm going to copy this information. Which these are all fake. They're fake credit card numbers. I just made them up. I did try to keep consistent with the Discover card, MasterCard, and Visa. So those are legitimately that would fall into one of the algorithms for those cards, for each one of those cards. Go up here, I'm going to paste this, enter, and I'll hit Control Z, enter, to copy that file. If we do a directory here, we'll see we got the credit cards. I'll delete the old one. So we'll just wipe out the uh, credit cards right there. Delete the old one. Now I want to log in as Fatma right here. And from my uh, Linux box, I'll go ahead and log in as Fatma into the system to create a session. So if we look over here at the users, we can see we have administrators logged in. Let's go ahead and telnet over to 192.168.1.111-l Fatma and password Amitav. Excellent. And now we are in there. So we're we're logged into the Microsoft Telnet server. Going back to the server, we are now remotely logged into it. Do 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 do, do which I'm not seeing anybody there. But we're remotely logged into the system. from my system. So now that we've done that, we've set up our lab environment, it is ready for us to go through and scan the active sessions and to scan for all the available ports. So let's go on to part two in the next, uh, the next section there, and we'll look at how to actually conduct the scan itself.